Last week was an active one for the U.S. economy and the financial market. So what's driving these wild swings and what can we do about it? Steve Dorn is the senior vice president at Legacy Trust. He is here now with some insight. Great to see you. Thanks for being here. Great to be here. Thanks. All right. So what is driving this uncertainty with the markets? Yeah, clearly this year has been uh, much different than the last three years. Uh, the markets are off to one of their worst starts since 1939. I guess the silver lining to that is, you know, since that time, the markets have averaged about 11% annually. Uh, so it really pays to stay invested. You know, this year has been one of uncertainty with respect to the direction of interest rates. Um, the economy remains you know, relatively healthy. We see good earnings growth continuing this first quarter, uh, but the uncertainty lies with the with the Fed and the path on future interest rates. And I know it's hard to predict, but where are they headed? Any insight into that? Yeah, it looks like rates are going to be headed higher. The Fed has basically laid out their plan to raise rates continuously throughout the year. Uh, being more aggressive in the early stages, which is what we saw last week when the Fed raised rates by 50 basis points. You know, normally they typically raise rates a quarter point at a time, uh, but they really want to get ahead of the inflation. And in order to do that, they're going to be more aggressive in the early stages. Yeah, so what do you think? Do you think that will work? And then do you think it'll work quickly? Or how long do you think that will take? Well, normally what happens with the Fed and changes to interest rates is it takes time to work its way through the economy. You know, most Fed uh, policy changes usually take 12 to 18 months before they actually impact the economy. So what they're doing today will meaningfully impact the economy until 2023. That being said, the market's already pricing in the increase in rates, and we're already starting to see things like auto loans, mortgages, student loan. Those rates have already started to go higher. And that will eventually crimp demand to some extent. All right. Are you seeing this as a buyer's market right now? I think, you know, at, at some point it will become a buyer's market. I think what's happened more recently is that actually there's just been a lack of buyers. And that's why we've seen these four consecutive weeks of significant, you know, downward pressure on stocks is that the sellers are in control at this point. And so it only takes a lack of buyers for the market to go down uh, when the sellers are in control, which is what we're seeing these days. Well, Eventually, though, stocks will become attractive and, again, will be the, the best way to grow your wealth over time. All right. You know, a lot of people keeping an eye on those retirement investment accounts. So what can you say to kind of ease some worries that are going on right now? Yeah, I think especially if you're a younger investor, now's a great time to continue to, to dollar cost average into these, these lower prices. Uh, stocks are on sale, so to speak. You know, stocks are one of the few things that when prices go down, people actually want to buy less of. You know, that's really kind of counterintuitive, but you know, we really want to make sure that we're continuing to you know, make those periodic investments. If you're later in your career, maybe already reached retirement, you really need to assess what your investment objectives are and what your risk tolerance is. I think this is always a good time to, to go back and, and revisit those uh, decisions that you've already made and make sure that the investments that you own are appropriate for what those goals and objectives are. All right, sounds like good advice, good insight there. Nice to see you, Steve Dorn. Thanks so much for being here today. Thanks, Michelle, appreciate it.